Hello, it's Jeannie. How are you? I hope you are well. I've been a bit on the chaotic side in my life. A lot of things going on. And I have to tell you, life isn't always ASMR. Sometimes it's a little bit crazy and that's what it's been like for me lately. Uh, somebody made a comment about my husband's voice and my voice and what our house must sound like, how calm. <laughs> I have not been calm. So, I am getting ready for our trip to Germany coming up very soon and I'm so excited but I have a lot to do to get ready. Now, one of the things that is absolutely a must for me to take with me is my Manta mask, sleep mask. And I am so happy to say that today's video is being sponsored by Manta Sleep. And I have a couple of new masks to choose from. Let me show you. So, the first one is the Manta Glow, and this glows in the dark. So, I think for the trip that we take, I'm going to let my mother wear this one in case she gets up and needs to use the restroom and then come back. It will glow in the dark so she'll be able to find it easily. The one my husband will choose is either the silk, and I've had this one for quite a while and I love it. This is my go-to um, nap headache you know, oh, it's made out of 22 mummy silk. Oh, it's so nice and lightweight. And none of these press on your eyeballs. These have, they, they have those fantastic cups that cup your eye and not press it. But here's my new one, the second new one I have, this bad boy. And this is Bluetooth, and these are speakers that I can listen to. So it goes around my head like this, and I can adjust the speakers according to my head size. So. This is the one I am going to be using with my nice classical music. What I love about these is they are all compatible with the aroma dots. And these aroma dots that I have are bergamot, eucalyptus, and lavender. Right now, I have the lavender in this one, the Manta Sleep Sound. Let me show you what they look like. And these dots are infused with essential oils and they are amazing. So this is what I will be using when we fly to Germany. Did you know that a short daytime snooze can also boost workplace performance and a nap can improve cognitive functions such as memory, logical reasoning, and the ability to complete complex tasks? Now, the perfect time or the perfect amount of napping is about 20 minutes, no more than 30. Beyond that, you could fall into a deep sleep and wake up feeling more groggy. So, and it can inter interrupt your nighttime sleep. So 20 minutes, 30 minutes max. 
Mantis sleep believes that great sleep is the non-negotiable foundation you need to create your best life. Click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment and use my promo code GenieB10 to get a great discount today. I am so grateful to Manta Sleep for providing me um, with these fantastic masks. I have so many now to choose from and for sponsoring my channel and offering a great discount for you all to try out these masks as well. Again, click on the link that I'm providing you in the description or in the pinned comment and use my code GenieB10 to get a great discount today. Thank you. So today's video has been something several people have requested that I do, and I didn't really understand what it was until I watched it. And it is GB's 25 question challenge. And there's some interesting questions in these 25, and some of them I've touched on before in other videos, but I thought I'm going to go ahead and do this and make a video. And see what you think. Okay? So, let's get started on these questions. The GB's 25 question challenge. I think I can read it without my glasses. The first question is, what is the first time I experienced ASMR? And I think I've answered that before. And like most of you, it was when I was a child in school, watching the teacher um, read a book and turn the pages and that crinkly sound of the pages turning just oh, made me want to drool. And the second thing I can think of is when I was a young girl taking a nap, when I had to take naps without my Manta mask. And I would hear airplanes, small aircraft going over the house occasionally. And just that droning sound was very soothing to me. And so I just loved that sound and I would imagine who it was up there and where they were going. And typically I fell asleep listening to that. So those are the two things that um, I can recall as my first ASMR experience. The second question is, when was the first time I watched ASMR on YouTube? And I think it was probably 10 or 12 years ago. I was listening, I started off by listening to talk radio, just for the blah, blah, blah. But the problem was I was listening to the wrong stations. <laughs> for, they all had commercials which were jarring. And then the talk radio station I was listening to was George Norrie. And he had some guests on that were actually kind of scary. And as my husband traveled a lot, um, when I would hear stories about aliens and UFOs and the tall gray ones or the short green ones, I started imagining that they were outside my window or in my closet, under my bed, and... Um, or Bigfoot, you know, Bigfoots, or shapeshifters. I'd never heard of shapeshifters outside of George Nori. So it was too scary for me. And I'm too gullible and vulnerable and sensitive. So I can't even watch scary movies. So I started looking for like, uh, you know, searching for boring lectures. Um, because if, you, if you've been in college, you remember listening to a boring, boring 
professor as he's up there droning on about, you know, the Krebs cycle or, you know, something in biology or, you know, something, and you're just trying to keep your eyes open. So I found something on YouTube, and that led to me finding something else and something else and something else. And I think I kind of landed on Maria, gentle whispering, and watching her um, and her voice and her sounds were just so soothing. And I didn't understand what I was really watching, um, but I knew that was it. So it was my girl, Maria. So I have her to thank for starting this uh, journey way, way, way back when. The next question is, what's your favorite unintentional ASMR video? And I can think of two, and these are unintentional. The first one is Kirsten and Jörg, two Germans in Britain. They don't mean to be ASMR, but very often how they're walking through a, a cottage, a property, a, a grounds, a town, it, it feels very ASMR. And I love, I love it. And I start falling asleep, but I have to watch their content again because um, I want to see, you know, the content and, and what it is they're talking about, but it's very, very soothing. The other one that I love is From It Up, From It Up, F-R-U-M, and it's an Orthodox Jewish woman. She's also a doctor, and she just talks about how she does meal prep or organizing and, you know, just things about her life and I find it, again, very soothing. So those are my two unintentional ASMR channels. The next one is name the last five ASMR artists that I watched. I would say, as always, Maria, my girl, Maria, gentle whispering, Kirsten and York, I mentioned them. But Yona Yinton, her, what she does is epic. Sometimes, and I again, I have to watch it, and um, it's just so beautifully done. Um, Lori Latte, ASMR, because she's just a kick in the pants. She just makes my heart smile. That girl. Um, old school ASMR sounds. Christina. She is Romanian, living in northern Italy. And what I love about her voice is it's very sing-song. I love, I love her soft-spoken because she talks like this. And so I will go to the shore. And I can't even get as high as she gets. But I love it. It's so lovely. And it, I, meant to, I put on a, her in my playlists because it, she's just that fantastic. And extremely underrated and undiscovered. So check out Christina from Old School ASMR Sounds. She's going to blow up. Her channel should blow up. So, and then um, another one that I can't get 10 minutes through is Ploy's Thai Life. Ploy, P-L-O-Y, apostrophe S, yes, Thai Life. She does those head massages and she walks on people and it's Thai massage. And her, the sounds in the background, her talking, her whispering, the clickety-clackety sounds. 
oh my gosh, they just knock me out. They just, poof, I'm out. So Ploy's Thai Life is another in my playlist. Um, the next question. What is your favorite ASMR trigger to listen to? And I would say soft-spoken and with crinkles, gentle, quiet crinkles like this. And not just the crinkles, but the soft-spoken as well. It seems like the two are just a beautiful blend. And maybe that's taking me back to my childhood listening to my teacher read a story to the class. So this is my favorite What is my, oh wait, I just said that. What is my least favorite trigger to listen to? Mouth sounds. Unless it's just natural from talking like this, mouth sounds are worse to me than nails on a chalkboard. That, I can't even do it, you know the, whatever it is. To me, it feels rude and obnoxious and it makes me angry. And so I immediately have to just eject from that video. I can't handle it. That the knocking, can't do it. That is a pet peeve of mine. I know there are people who love it, love it, love it, and the, the eating, and I guess it's just being raised with that, eat quietly, you know, my mom's scolding me, eat quietly, close your mouth, you know, you sound like a barnyard animal, <laughs> and so I, I can't stand it, and, um, and then obnoxious tapping that is loud and disruptive, like taking this. Now see, I like soft tapping like this. Slow and intentional. This is me. And again with the soft spoken. This defeats the purpose of ASMR, in my humble opinion. Or even worse, I'll take this Manta box. It's a hard box. And it could be tapped quietly, intentionally, and gently and it won't disturb me or make me wake up or sorry but when I hear Mama J is not happy and uh, it's just Annoying. No. <laughs> in my in my ASMR world, we don't do that. If we're gonna tap, that's what I like. Nice and quiet, with soft spoken, or even with some whispering. It's hard for me to stay in a whisper for long, but if I did, I wouldn't ruin it with. So there, I think I made my point right. Okay, 
um, do I use ASMR to relax or fall asleep? 100% yes, every night. And I have a playlist so that I do not have to search for something because sometimes weird stuff just pops on the what's next. And I've heard some weird things, you know, so I get a nice long playlist, put that on and boom, that's it. What is my bedtime routine? Well, <laughs> make the next day's coffee, um, usually take a bath or a shower, um, you know, get the house locked down and lay down pick my playlist, put in my ear pods, and <laughs> what I do is, if I'm sleeping, typically I sleep on my left, I use one ear pod because this one will hurt a little bit in my ear, so I just use the one, but I have my ear pod case right under my pillow so that if I'm going to turn over, I've learned how to do it <laughs> and pop out and switch my my ear thing, earbud, is that what it's called? Put it in here and keep that one empty. But I can do it without waking up. So, that's my nighttime routine. Um, what is my favorite trigger to do? And again, I think I already went over this. It's to not only to listen to, but to do is page turning you know, and soft spoken. Um, I think that's what I'm, you know, just partial to in terms of listening as well as doing. And then the least favorite trigger to do again is mouth sounds or eating. One time I, I had a piece of licorice in my mouth, just a small one, and I was doing a magazine, so you didn't see me sucking on it. But a couple of you heard it and said, oh, you've got something in your mouth. And I did. And um, so I just, but mouth sounds, unless they're natural, can't do them. And I definitely can't hear them. I don't want to hear them. Um, have I... How long does it take me to make a video? Well, it depends on how many mistakes I make and how many edits I have to do. Sitting down and just going blah, blah, blah might be 35, 45 minutes if I don't um, have sneezes or loud stomach grumbles or, you know, brain lapses where I just kind of go blank. Um, but for the most part, in about 45 minutes. Now the editing can take a few hours because I have to watch it, edit, and then watch it again, edit, clip, listen. So that's what I do. And have I ever gotten tingles from my own videos? <sighs> no. Um, I think that's like tickling yourself, you know. You just can't do it for me. So no. Um, do I watch my own videos? No. After the edit, I'm done. Um, now, if somebody points out a particular time stamp, you know, I liked when you said this at 5.04, I will sometimes look at what that was. But no, I, I don't want to see myself anymore. And, um, okay. What software do I use to edit? That is iMovie. It's free. It's on my Mac. It's easy. Um, I'd love to be able to do more, but I just don't have the time or patience to learn more editing software. And I should, but someday. What time of the day do I film? 
usually in the morning around 10.30 to noon. And um, yeah, and I try to have a protein drink and a piece of cheese so that I can not have my stomach grumbling. An empty stomach is just, it's going to want to be a part of the video. Let's see. What is my favorite video that I've made? That's easy. The Countess. Jeannie B's School of Beauty. I fell in love with the Countess. She, I think, was just so cool. So, yeah, the Countess. I love that. And she was completely unscripted. That was just sit down with some makeup and a doll head and go for it, you know, and it was done in one take because I chopped her hair off. <laughs> You've got to watch it if you haven't. Let's see. Have any of our video, my videos had an unexpected negative fan reaction? I would say no, but one community post I did when the queen died, it was kind of polarizing with some people who are anti-monarchists, um, anti-royalists, and I love the monarchy. I love Queen Elizabeth. I, you know, I love William and Catherine, Prince and Princess of Wales, and I think Charles and Camilla have been hardworking, particularly Camilla. She had to come back against some horrific things. And all she did was keep her head down and work and work and work. She never responded to the negative stuff, you know, following in Diana's footsteps in terms of that whole relationship thing. Life is messy. Love is messy. And... You know, it wasn't the fairy tale, but it wasn't all Camilla's fault either. Diana had some culpability in this. Anyway, I digress. It was that um, picture of Queen Elizabeth that just kind of awoke the anti-monarchists. So, it didn't last. I mean, it was just a few. Um, what video of mine do I think didn't get the love it deserved. And I would say, again, Jeannie B's School of Beauty and the Countess. The, the comments were fantastic, but I think the views were, I can't remember what they were, but I think they should be 100,000 <laughs> in my own opinion. I just, I loved her so much. So I'm biased. Um, when, what is something the audience doesn't know about the behind the scenes of my channel? Well, I'm in a far, far room on one side of the house that is kind of my sewing and craft room. And for the most part, I have a green screen behind me. Um, and it's just easy for me to sit down and blah, blah, blah. Um, behind the scenes, the cats love being a part of this and are often banging to get in. Um, <laughs> but that's really it. Everything else is very, very normal. Let's see. What's the most absurd request I've received? from a fan. Well, nothing too crazy from the fans. I mean, I'm older. I'm not some young, you know, sexy thing that people are really propositioning. But as some of you know, I work with an agency who is, you know, so helpful in all my sponsorships. They're amazing. And they do everything for me. I just give them the video. And um, so I get lots and lots of offers for things. And I say yes to very few. No. Probably more than yes, I think. Um, 
I won't do any kind of smoking or vaping or, you know, certain kinds of video games, violent things or shooting things or tech things that are... I mean, there's a lot I say no to. Well, <laughs> one of the requests was for an opening, just an opening and a reveal on packaging of a sex torso. And I have to tell you, I don't even know what that is. It's a torso. So I'm figuring, I, I don't know. I don't know. We laughed about it a lot. And I almost thought that would be hilarious to do as a joke. But the answer was no, I'm not going to do an unboxing and unwrapping of a sex torso. You know, and it's like, how much is a torso? And <laughs> what do you do with a torso? You know, feel the biceps. <laughs> My God, your pecs look good today. I don't know. So that was the funniest one. Um, do my family and friends know that I make ASMR videos? Yes, they do now. And I'm much more open and, and um, I can talk about it much more easily now. Um, I have a YouTube channel. I'm a content creator. If I go into ASMR, I explain what it is. But um, everybody I know, most people I know, know what I'm doing now. And uh, so, have I ever been recognized in, in public? No, but I've had calls from people who have said, Jeannie, so-and-so just called me and said they watch you on YouTube. Or my sister-in-law who lives in the Netherlands, her 16-year-old son listens to you every night. So, you know, people who know someone else that knows me, they've seen me. Yeah, or they've let me know that their friends have seen me. So, that's it for um, my fame. <laughs> I think that's it. Nobody's ever... No. Okay. Not yet. So what inspires my video ideas? I think, naturally, I'm a very creative, outside-of-the-box person. And when I'm laying awake at night, I just imagine things. Or sometimes in the shower. Those are my two creative places. And I just, you know, think about things and think about what would make me laugh or what would make me interested and or what I would find important or interesting like vintage catalogs um, you know things like that or you know the countess you know I think about her a lot she's really been in my head some scenarios so it's just really laying back and imagining and letting my creativity just go and, you know, fantasize with it, imagine it. So, where do I find myself spending most of the time online? Besides YouTube, I assume. I would say email, um, my email, and I have a few different accounts for different things, but um, my email gets just so full. Sometimes I look at it and it's like, how will I ever get through it? And sometimes I can't. Um, I try to do my best at commenting back on the comments on YouTube. And sometimes I can't even do that. But I read it all. And if you get a heart, it means I have read it. And I do feel it with my heart. So I would say email. Um, and what advice would I give? give someone who wants to start their own ASMR channel. And I have. That's come at me a lot. And I say this. Do it. Just do it. Um, you don't have to wait for the perfect camera, the perfect lighting, the perfect mic, the perfect whatever. 
you know? Just start. You, may, you might like what you're doing, you might not like what you're doing, or you may start, you know, one path and it veers off to another. And that's life. Be flexible. Go with the change. And then if you don't like the results of what you're getting, because it takes a while to get going and ramp up, it takes a lot to get that train going, you know, try something else. If you're doing something that isn't getting favorable responses um, in the number that you need them to be in order to grow a channel, do something else. Um, you know, whatever that is, be creative, be authentic to yourself. But I'd also say vary it up, you know, don't just be a one trick pony. So I like to see that somebody has variety as they're starting out. Um, like, let's take Christina from ASMR, uh, old school ASMR sounds. She has whispering and she's got soft spoken. She's got role plays. She has got um, true crime, um, you know, and so she's got a variety of what she does. And I love that. Um, so I, that would be my advice is don't quit too early. Be willing to just do it and not be the best at it right off because you learn as you go. Don't worry about the technology. You'll figure it out. Trust that you'll figure it out as you need to. And that's like life, you know? Cross that bridge when you, when you have to. Figure it out then. But if you want to start a channel, get your phone, get a camera if you have one, and just start. That's it. <sighs> so, that is my GB25 question challenge. And I think I've answered it, you know, to the best of my capabilities. And if anything, except for that loud knocking, tapping, or obnoxious mouth sounds that I did, I hope you find it comforting and helps you get to sleep or rest. Because ultimately, that is what my channel is for. It's about bringing you the most relaxation that I can. It's about maybe giving you a little bit of uplifting love, kindness, affirmation, and boosts. You know, letting you know that there are people who do want to put the wind under your wings and I do. I want to see you all fly. I feel like I know so many of you. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that. Some of you have shared such amazing things with me on the scale of life. And, and I'm just a get up and be better. You can do this. I can be a little bit of a cheerleader, sometimes maybe too much, you know, but I really believe in the just, just move forward. Take one step forward because you can and you're worth it. No one here on this planet is just like you and you have so much value and you've shown me such amazing grace and love and so I want to encourage you all to you know those remember the bozo um, you punch that plastic clown down he comes right back up <laughs> be the bozo not like that but it's like get back up just get back up it's hard I know I do know I do know but you can and I want you to believe that you can more than anything. So 
I'm going to sign off for now. I bid you so much peace, so much wellness, and so much love. Thank you for being here on my channel. Thank you for being subscribers. And thank you for just being a really fun part of my life. I appreciate you. See you in the next video. Bye for now.